let's think about an alternative that's that's an investment at time t equal to zero and then it has three years of returns of an annuity so this is let's say option one and then let's look at another investment that is a different amount and it's an annuity of two years if i want to compare these two i can't use present worth and i can't use annual worth i can't use future worth because it's not fair because you've got this sort of other year and you say well what what about you know i, I can't just look at the dollar amounts because that's not a fair comparison for the most part we have to think about well what am I going to do for this extra year? And you could say, well, how about I, what if I were to repeat? What if I just repeated this? And I said, okay, at the end of this investment, I'll just do it again. It might look something like this. I've got sort of a green occurrence of this investment. And then I've got an orange occurrence of this investment. So here's here's the orange occurrence and then here's the green occurrence and and now i've got an investment that i've kind of repeated but now it's for 4 years so now i've got the same problem up here well what do i do for this what do i do in this fourth year i can't now we got a 3 year versus a 4 year well i could repeat this one too maybe you can see where i'm going with this I can repeat this and now I've got an orange investment that I've repeated and here I've got the green investment but now it's good for six years well wait a minute I can actually come back down here and repeat this one again and now they both have a six-year horizon right so here n equals six and here n equals six well it turns out this is in fact what you need to do to make it a fair comparison so so think about where i started i started out with a an alternate an investment alternative that was a three-year investment with return and here i got a two-year investment with return but it's not fair to just straight up compare them what i have to do is i have to assume that i can just repeat that same investment again and I repeat that same investment until I find the least common multiple of the number of years for the two the, the two investments. Now, least common multiple, okay, so LCM, maybe this takes you back to, I think it's probably grade six math or something. Maybe it's grade five. I, I don't know. It's been a while for me. But if I have the number three and I have the number two, what is the least common multiple of two and three? Well, it's six. And, and the way that I constructed those, those diagrams was sort of illustrative of how we arrived at finally uh, an n equal to six as a fair comparison between these two investments. But I want you to notice a couple of things. One of the things that happens when we repeat a first cost with an annuity investment is that that annuity is actually one continuous uninterrupted annuity where I'm assuming I'm reinvesting the same dollar amount at, invested at t equal to zero, I'm reinvesting it at t equal to n. So at the same time period where I receive my last annuity payment related to the first investment, I'm making another investment and then and then keeping that return going same thing down here this annuity is actually a continuous annuity that is uninterrupted for n equal to six periods but here i have three investments here i have two investments and if i followed the right calculations for the time value of money and calculated the present worth of this one the present worth of this one i could make a decision about which one is better and that would be to choose the one that had choose the modified investment alternative 
using the least common multiple of years, choose the alternative uh, that has the higher present worth or higher annual worth. While I'm here, I'll also point out that when you look at a repeated investment using the annual worth and you convert, let's say, let's say I was to convert just this two year investment to an annual worth, the annual worth would be the same amount as the annual worth is for the second iteration as it is for the third iteration. In fact, the annual worth is always the same for an assumption that we can just repeat the lives. For present worth, we're bringing everything back to the present. So I can't, so it doesn't make sense to say that, well, the present worth of this investment is, you know, whatever it is at, at time t equal to, to zero. Well, the present worth of this investment is that same number, but it's at time t equal to three. So then I have to move that back to time t equal to zero. So present worth is a little bit more complicated because I'm taking this second investment and moving it back all the way back to the present. Whereas annual worth, each of these individual little calculations is an island unto itself that gives you the same annual worth answer. So the takeaway from, from this is that if I use annual worth as a basis of comparison, and I assume that I can repeat lives, I don't actually have to repeat the lives. I just have to calculate the annual worth. And I could do that for these first two alternatives. I could do it for this, calculate the annual worth, do it for this, calculate the annual worth, and make the decision. Um, and I would instantly get the answer. I wouldn't have to actually repeat the, repeat the lives, as long as I assume the assumption is of repeating the lives is possible. So that's the advantage that I had alluded to previously that the annual worth has over the present worth uh, in, in terms of projects where the, the uh, time horizon is different. So you might see a multiple choice question on your, on your midterm exam. You know, for projects with unequal lives, the preferred method of comparison is present worth, annual worth, payback, whatever. The answer would be annual worth. Right? So the, the preferred method would be annual worth, just because it's it's easier to do. You don't actually have to find the least common multiple and do it. Although, you know, um, it's always good on a test somewhere or in a quiz to give you a problem like this and then have you compare the projects using the present worth method of analysis, just to make sure that you understand how to actually repeat these cash flow diagrams. And I think the biggest confusion usually comes right at the transition from one to the other. But honestly, you're really, you're just taking this shape and you're just sticking it on in the, in the closest possible place that it will go such that that, you know, that annuity looks like it's an uninterrupted annuity. And then you have just these repeating first costs uh, at the beginning of every cycle. So not really rocket science, you know, and like I said, least common multiple takes you back to about grade six, but conceptually, I think this is a good way to explain why annual worth can sometimes be superior to easier than present worth when you have these unequal lives uh, in their in projects.